I'm in the Yarra Valley, about an hour northeast of Melbourne, and I'm surrounded by over 300 mostly edible plants, some are medicinal, from all around the world. They're all densely packed together to create a one-acre food forest. It's part of a conference wedding centre owned by Louise Ward and her husband, who also live on the site. Well, it actually means that you're mimicking the normal forest within as a food system. You'll have all sorts of different things that you would find when you go in a forest. Some things you can eat, some things you can't, but they're all there, have their purpose within a forest. And that's really what the edible forest is all about, except many more edible things in it. So how did this all get started? I started researching a bit more about gardens and growing things. And while I was doing my research, I came across permaculture and also the term edible forest. And I thought, wow, now that would be amazing. So I walked into the office, I think the next day, actually really quite, because I'm quite impulsive. I walked in the office, I said, guys, I have had the best idea. Let's just build an edible forest. Hey. And they all go, <laughs> all right. I say, yeah, you know, we like the Garden of Eden. People can walk in, taste. I can just see it in front of me. I think it's just a brilliant idea. Let's just do this. <laughs> um, I think they just went like, oh, OK, no. what is that oh. noise? <laughs> so what was here beforehand? A paddock. Purely a paddock, straight ah. paddock. It was on the slope, so it was yes. quite clay-based, so nothing really you could do with it. So to improve the clay soil, what did you do? We started with just collecting manure everywhere. Horse manure, a cow manure, as much as we could find. And my poor husband was up and down the highway with the tractor and the trailers and just getting as much as we could because it was a big area. So we started with making, building the paths, so yeah. we had that because we need to know where we are gonna dump all this, this organic And just material. sort of make a pattern And make plan. a bit of a pattern. I always yeah. wanted to have something that was still structured, mm. but still was a forest. So what do you do with all the produce? There's a lot of produce yeah. and we're always having to think what we do with it, but we've, uh, because we've got the business here, we actually use that within the menus as well, so we can preserve it. We freeze them, we take them out, and then we can use them throughout the year for all the different menus. Horticulturalist Jamie Sweetman has looked after the plants for nearly four years and takes the tour groups round the garden. Everywhere you look, it's just covered plants and plants and more plants. Yeah. How many are edible? So we've got about 330 plants in here and about 200 are edible. And the other 100 just fit into the system, so they will be attracting beneficial bugs or nitrogen fixing. Everything has to have an excuse to be in here. <laughs> Even the roses? Even the roses. The roses, actually, we make syrup with the rose hips. Yeah. We make uh, tea out of them as well. That's um, a beautiful crab apple variety we have in here. It's fantastic. We've taken every spot in the garden, I think. It is a really good effort to put this big netting up, isn't it? It is, and we wouldn't be able to have this garden without it because we are keeping out deer and rabbits, yeah. and especially cockatoos. All around the fence line is areas, little diamonds, that all the little birds can come in. So we've got blue wrens in here. Look at them. Yeah, perfect example, the little yeah. blue wrens. It's so, lovely. Yeah, so they come in and out of the fence line as they please. Um, sort of the bees and the dragonflies and all the good stuff. This is a terrific looking plant, isn't it? It is. Wow. This is our elderberry, so Sambucus nigra. Yeah. The flowers are huge on this one. You can imagine when it's in flower. Um, sure. And we make a cordial and a syrup out of those. But the berries are the, um, the main stars, I think, because they're really medicinal, really good for coughs and congestion. And yeah, we do a syrup and a tonic with those. Oh, yum. And they've got a different So we, yeah. We've got a variety up there that I think is better for the berries. That one's Ni Sambucus nigra golden, so it's just a different variant. Because of the leaf? Yeah. It's got a golden It's got a, a lot of a golden um, thing, and the berries are just uh, double the size. Yeah. And this one, the flowers are double the size, so this one for the flowers for sure. So you should have both? I think so, yeah. <laughs> This is a wild and woolly one, isn't it? It is. I think this one's everyone's favourite. This is the Cape Gooseberry from Peru. Open them up, and here it is in its own little lollip. Oh. And you've got the berry. Oh, can I take that one? Yep. Thank you. Oh, it is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. A little bit tart. Mm. 
So these are like tomatoes, um, yeah. related to tomatoes, so you can grow them from seed. That's very easy to grow, isn't it? Very easy. And mm. these usually actually fruit at the end of winter, which is great, but mm. this is doing a flush now. Here's something you don't <laughs> see very often. What is it? Not here in Australia, you don't. This is a arona berry. The common name is chokeberry. Chokeberry, why? Wow, yes. You're not going to choke, are you? You won't choke, but they're quite astringent. But in saying that, they have more antioxidants in them than blueberries. Quite easier to grow. They make a great hedge, easy to harvest. They all ripen at the same time and you can harvest them. Oh, they're very nice. Yeah. They look like a blueberry and they're in a ro the rose family. They are in the rose family. Ha! Huh. Well, wow. You can beautiful. kind of tell with the leaf shape. Yes, you can. Yeah. They're beautiful. I love them. And what do we have here? So these are our way of doing the chop and drop method. Mm -hmm. So in permaculture, quite often you'll cut something down and drop it on the ground so that its nutrients can go back into the ground. And we'll pull that up soon, throw some mulch over the top of it, leave it for a while, and building soil on site. Ah, oh, so most of it breaks down, obviously, from the bottom. It will. Little bits will be left, yep. but you just leave those. Even though it's not broken down, we just spread it out a little bit, put mulch over it, it will be a little hump. Leave it for a year and come back and you've got beautiful, perfect mulch to plant into. Excellent. Good little compost heap. Yeah, they work really well. Uh, this is Nadu, isn't it? You don't that often is see Nadu. it. Yeah, so this is our wetland area and everything in here is actually edible as well. So this is a lovely one. Yeah, so this is our Persian silk tree and this is one of our nitrogen fixing trees. So we have nitrogen fixers throughout the whole garden um, and what they do is they have the ability to go into the ground and they have nodules on their roots that f turn nitrogen into forms that other plants can find them accessible. So therefore they're self-fertilising our garden for yeah. us. There's an awful lot of plants here, but you must have a special one. I actually have a very special one. It's a medicinal one, so it's mm. not the most beautiful looking one. Yeah. But it's actually this one over here. It's called the Gotcha Cola. And look and at it. It just goes everywhere. It's a big, patch, of it. it's a big yep. patch. It's yeah. very, very happy over here. It's a great little ground cover too. Good. Gardening is just the, one of the best things I've ever discovered. It's just wonderful. Getting your hands dirty is just one of the most wonderful things in the world. It's, it's just really good for mentally. It's, it's everything. Thank you.